Later this morning, the House will begin the markup of two new digital asset bills uh, crafted by the Agriculture and Financial Services Committees. The bills seek to establish a regulatory framework for crypto and spur innovation while protecting consumers and market participants. Joining us now with the details, Congressman French Hill, Vice Chair of the Financial Services Committee and Chair of the Digital Assets Subcommittee. He has an op-ed in the Hill laying out the ideas behind his digital assets regulatory framework. I don't want to get too excited. But I actually do want to get excited, uh, Congressman. It, but will this, um, what are its chances? And is, is this finally it? It's bipartisan, right? Well, Joe, uh, good morning. Yes, we've worked very hard. We've worked for over a year on a bill with our Democratic colleagues and with the Biden administration to find a pathway to have stable coin legislation where we actually define what is a stable coin. How are they measured? How are they audited? Uh, how are they reported? How are investors protected? And that bill is one we continue to uh, work on and we will bring it to markup this week. And secondly, we have this regulatory framework overall that deals with what is a digital asset? Is it a security? Is it a commodity? How do you trade those? Where do they trade? Is it traded on a commodity exchange or on a securities exchange? And how are investors, again, protected? And how are innovators able to bring those uh, entities to the market? Who's in charge? Al Haig, do we know who's in charge? Who's in charge of, of crypto? Who's, I think he passed away finally, didn't he? But who, who's in charge? of crypto yeah. in this country? Is it right. Gensler? Is it Congress? Is it the CFTC? Do you have any idea? Yeah, what Congress authorizes in these bills is uh, we allow for a stable coin to be issued uh, at the states under a state regulatory scheme that's supervised by the Federal Reserve and Federal Reserve high standards. Uh, and so that's the pathway. It can be either a federal pathway or a state pathway. And then for crypto generally, if it's a security, the SEC uh, is in charge. If it's a commodity, the CFTC is in charge. And people can be duly registered to trade uh, these entities on the proper exchange, a commodity exchange or a securities exchange. And we put to rest, what is that test, the so-called Howey test, on how somebody determines if an asset, a digital asset, is a security or is a commodity. And we think that brings a lot of clarity to the market, both for innovators, entrepreneurs, but also for investors, so that they finally have the protection that they need that they have not seen uh, due to the FTX collapse and a lot of the other crises that we faced in the uh, crypto environment. Um, is, do you talk to Chair Gensler about how to do this? I, I think last time I, I may have asked you that, and you said, yeah, you're in contact with everyone, but is there a consensus on, on which way to go on this? I still don't feel that confident it's going to be this year, for example. Well, we are going to work hard to get it out of committee this week and, and create consensus to pass it in the House. And then we're working with our Senate colleagues on what path they prefer, because we need the stability of a regulatory framework. We need a statutory regulatory framework, because I don't think that the SEC has the fit for purpose statutory authorities to do what they need to do. And we know for a fact in talking to Chairman Benham at the CFTC, the Commodities and Future Trading Commission, that they don't have the statutory authority that they need. So this will bring clarity to the market and give the direction to the SEC and the CFTC what's the right regulatory framework. You know, uh, Congressman, I. Um not necessarily what CNBC normally covers, but it's in your, the notes here uh, about additional topic. And far be it from me not to pay attention to the notes, but uh, <laughs> Speaker McCarthy uh, floating an impeachment inquiry in, into Biden. Do you, you think that, um, do you think that's something that, that, that is ready? I, it's very strange. I, I think if anything's going to come from it, it's going to have to be Congress. Th this is the Post uh, today. Every day they've got something. And I, while yeah. I was talking to you, I was looking through the New York Times. Do not count on this paper or the Washington Post uh, to, to help you uh, figure out what's going on. I don't think. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It's confounding to me because they were the great, you know, Pentagon Papers, uh, Woodward and Bernstein with the Post and, and investigative journal, and they're holding power to account. I just don't see it happening. So I, I think the only way it's going to happen is maybe if, if you do do something like this. Do you think there's something going on? I mean, is there something that smells funny with all of this, or is it just la, 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 like the entire Democratic Party on this? <laughs> 
Yeah, no, there's something that doesn't smell right here based on the uh, FBI materials that the uh, Oversight Committee led by Jamie Comer have reviewed. We find inconsistencies in what President Biden has said his connections to his son's business dealings were when he was vice president. They don't so say I think that he did, Congressman, they don't say he didn't talk about it anymore. They, and, and yesterday, no, they, watching the press secretary, she said, it's the same answer it's always been. He wasn't in business with Hunter. That's not the same answer. It's all, so that's right there is false, that it's the same answer. It used to be a right. different answer. No, I think that's what you see uh, Chairman Comer focused on is those differences in the story. And I think McCarthy's view is, look, this is just uh, evidence potentially of an inquiry. He wants the Oversight Committee to follow the evidence where it leads, do things in a methodical, fair-minded and, and appropriate way. In other words, just exactly the opposite of what Speaker Pelosi green-lighted with the shift investigations of Trump. Right, we don't want that. things done in she a haphazard way. Right, I saw that. She had to do it by law. I saw her. I saw those quotes yesterday on the. Uh, right. It was on the uh, Burisma Ukraine, uh, or, or no, talking to the, uh, yeah, uh, and withholding the the the, the money. She said, it had to be done. It had to be done. The impeachment. She, she didn't want to do it. Had to be done. Well, the same thing would apply with this. I would think. Right. That's right. But I think I do think Speaker McCarthy is doing it in a very deliberate way. And Jamie Comer is as well. And so they'll follow the evidence where it leads. They're right. getting good cooperation. But this demonstrates the seriousness of what's happening in what we're uncovering in that committee.